It's Sunday morning, and we are in a study on prophecy. Uh, prophecy is a teaching about God picking out a lineage to be his people. And then it's about the rebellion against God by all the people that surrounded Israel. And then, it, then that system bleeding into Israel. Uh, everything we teach on prophecy goes back to Babylon. Let me draw this a very crude uh, picture of the Middle East here. But uh, all, of the, all the teachings of the Bible has to do with, with the Middle East. The, this is Turkey right here. And on the western end of Turkey, what we call Turkey, they call that Asia Minor. Asia Minor. And right in the middle of Turkey was a state called Galatia. And there were four towns that Paul went to, Antioch, uh, Iconium, Lystra, and Derby. And they stoned Paul and left, left him for dead at Lystra. And you'll find that over in the 14th chapter of Acts. Then you move on over here, and this comes down to a little isthmus here. Well, all that peninsula, I guess you'd call it. An isthmus is what it connects two countries together. And then, then it takes you up here to what we would call Greece, but you had Philippi and you had Thessalonica up here. That's in the northern section of the Aegean Sea. I'm just going to kind of draw something in general. Then you have the Peloponnesus down here. It looks like a hand with three fingers here. You can see that right here. And then it takes you over to Italy, and this is the Aegean Sea. Aegean Sea. And this over here is the Adriatic Sea. And then Adriatic Sea. And then you had the boot of Italy coming down here, like so. You get back over here to the uh, major part of the European continent, which takes you down to Spain, France here. And then you had uh, 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 Germany up here. And right across from Germany, or right across from France, you had England here. And each one of these systems had a form of sun and tree worship. But the Bible says that it all came out of Babylon. And right here, I don't have that thin enough, you get down to the Strait of Gibraltar, Strait of Gibraltar right here. It nearly touches the tip of Africa. You got Spain on this side and the northern tip of Africa there. Casablanca was some down here, right down here in Morocco. And uh, that's an old movie, that reason I said that with Humphrey Bogart. And then uh, you got Africa here. You had the, you had Carthage, the Carthage Empire, Hannibal came up here and wanted to conquer Rome, and he had to cross the Alps, uh, Switzerland's up here, and so forth. And that's when he brought his elephants with him, and he's going to conquer them. Then you get over here, and you get back to Libya. Libya is a big country. It's larger than Egypt. Egypt over here, and you get back up here to Israel. Above Israel, you have Lebanon, our ancient Tyre and Sidon. And then you go over here and you get here's Syria and over here is is Mesopotamia or what we would call Iraq. The reason I put this on the board, people will get a better understanding if you know what's happening. This is the entire land of the Bible. Nothing happens over here. I told uh, uh, Dan 
bought us this illustrative uh, screen up here, and I'll be using that when I learn how to use it when he gets another computer up. Well, I, I, want, to, I want to take this. If I put all of the America on the board, South America, North America, and then you put Europe here, and you put the Mediterranean Sea area where the Bible was taking place, it's just a small piece of land, it's just a small area of, of uh, real estate that became the Bible lands of the Scripture. Well, each, we know that Babylon mothered all idolatry. Idolatry means harlotry. And Babylon was on the Euphrates River right here. And it was Nimrod that started all of this system. Now, you've heard me say this. I've had people ask me questions. If you don't believe in demons, how then how was Satan cast out of heavens? Satan and demons are not the same thing at all. Demons are imaginary. Satan, I'm going to try to help you see something this morning. Satan, demon is you in the... Whenever I read something, I don't read it out of one book. I've got hundreds of books that I research in. We've got the internet I research in. And I see things repeated throughout the scripture, throughout these... I read a lot of secular writers. I read a lot of Christian writers. And some of them I use the term loosely. Even if you're reading out of McClinic and Strong, you're probably reading where men have constructed this. One man didn't construct this. Probably four or five hundred men are employed to put together something like this. And when Mr. Strong is a part of it, who produced the Strong's Exhausted Concordance, and he is the James Strong of the McClinic and Strong. It's called Cyclopedia of Biblical, Theological, and Ecclesiastical Literature. I may read one article over here, and another article over here, and they're by two different men, and they take a little different view of something. Well, I have to go in and exegete myself, take the words out, break them down, find out what they mean, and see if I believe that they agree with Scripture. People will say, well, if all these people had these different beliefs, what makes you think you're right? I don't believe I'm right. I believe the Bible is right. And I have to find out what these things mean if I go into enough detail. Not just, you can't just define one word out of one dictionary and have the answer. You can't do that. There's this broad spectrum we have to look at. It's, it's like... It's like a, a, a huge picture from one end of the Bible to the other. If you see Satan being cast out of heaven in the 12th chapter of Matthew, well, in Matthew, in 12th chapter of Revelation, that's not where he was cast out. Revelation is a panoramic view of all time. It's a huge view. Satan is cast out wherever you find the first the first characteristic of Satan, that's where you'll find he was cast out before that. Where's the first characteristic of Satan? Genesis 1, 2. In the beginning God created, but you have to define create to find out it's a righteous word. And the earth became without form and void. When you get to without form and void and darkness being upon the face of the deep, and I'm not going to go back into that, but I really love teaching on the first chapter of Genesis. Darkness on the face of the deep and without form, tohu means in vain, vanity. Well, that's not what God created in the first verse. Do I believe in the what's called the gap theory? I certainly do. It's less of a theory than six days of creation. Well, Satan was cast into the earth. Well, if Satan was cast into the earth, he wasn't just cast into the earth. So you have to look at other... You have to look at other verses about the defilement of the earth. When you get over there in Job, the 25th chapter, and Job says, man is a worm. 
And when he says the heavens are not clean in God's sight, then evidently when Satan was cast into all of this sphere, he corrupted the earth and all the dust. He corrupted the moon. The moon is not clean. He corrupted the stars. So the entire universe that we live in, due to the fact you study from one end of the Bible to the other, is corrupted. That's why when God picked up Adam and made him with the dust of the ground, Satan had corrupted the dust and Satan had, and Adam had to sin. The Bible says God formed Adam of the dust of the ground. Formed is the word Yatsar, Y-A-T-S-A-R. Yatsar is, it's a, it's a word that means to form the dust. That's not one the creation. It's a word that, it's the same word as potter. And then he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And that's when he became a living soul, when he breathed into his nostrils. That's the creation, is the breathing, not the forming. And you have to look at the scripture from one end to the other to see that. Now, everything that was evil, according to Genesis 11, 4, and Revelation 17 and 5, Babylon mothered all harlotry, Revelation 17 and 5, and Babylon was found on self. Well, Jim, why doesn't it go back to the garden? Well, the, everything had been destroyed up to the flood, and they came out of the ark in the ninth chapter. In the tenth chapter, all of Noah's sons scattered into various parts of the world. But how are you going to know the various parts of the world if you don't look at some maps? I look at maps all the time, and I've found that that the original measure, the original boundary of the Garden of Eden, there was a garden planted eastward in Eden. The garden was not Eden. It was planted eastward in Eden. When you read the, you read the second chapter of Genesis, the boundaries originally of Eden was from the great river of Egypt, the Nile, to the Euphrates. This was the original boundaries of the Garden of Eden in Genesis, the second chapter. When you go to Genesis, the 15th chapter, the original boundary line of Israel was from the Nile to the Euphrates. You think all of the, all of the Arabs will leave this area down here? You think they'll leave? You think the Syrians will leave up here? <laughs> I don't think so. How did those boundaries get switched? It was due to all the wars throughout the millennia. There was all these wars, and the boundary lines would shift. They shifted when Israel... How Hosea said Israel is like those that move the bound. Well, they moved their own boundary line over here into the land of Ammon and Moab to take in their gods of of Shemosh and Molech, which were sun and tree goddesses. And the sun and the tree goddesses, whether it was whether it was uh, Hercules, Venus, Jupiter, Zeus, they were all just pictures of the original prototype, Nimrod. Nimrod is the man who built Babylon. The Bible says that, tells us that in Genesis, the fourth chapter. So he built Babylon. So all of these gods, regardless of where they come from, the Bible says Babylon mothered them all. And they were all founded on let us make us a name. When they said let us make us a name, that's the reason for man getting involved is an imagination. God says, when you say, let us make us a name, the word name being Shem, and Shem was Noah's second born, the second born of Noah was called Shem, and the very word name, every time you find it in the Old Testament, is the word Shem. 
they were not only saying, let us make up our own Shem that can lead us, but we'll have a doctrine that's parallel in all of these gods, Hercules, Venus, Perseus, uh, begin to name them all. Each one of them had their form of Nimrod. And the way what these people did, where are you getting all this information? Through my books and through all through the Bible. And I study everything until it synthesizes. And people will write to me and say, they'll email me and say, well, if you don't believe in, in Satan, then how could Satan be cast in the earth? And they hear me say, I don't believe in demons. And I don't believe in demons, but I believe in Satan. Whatever you find, and one of my writers says this, I can't remember, I got a whole bunch of them up here. I was going to read some of these to you. A bunch of them will tell you that the word devil, they have been ambiguous about the word, and they've taken two words and translated it into the word devil or devils in the Bible. In the New Testament, they've taken the word diabolos and demonion. And we get our word demon from demonion, demon, from demonion, and it's not the same word as diabolos. Do I believe in diabolos? Well, yes, but you've got to go into the understanding of it to actually believe what it is. Do I believe in Satan? Yes. But boy, are we going to be surprised when we find out the word Satan means. It doesn't mean that individual. Satan fell from heaven. Let me give you some things here. Whenever you, if Babylon mothered it all, they had a father of the gods in Babylon called Marduk. The father of the gods over here, uh, they had Baal, who was the son of the father of the gods, and then they had Baal over here in Tyre and Sidon because you had everything evolved and it began to move all over the world. You had a father of the gods over here in Turkey, what we call Turkey, they called Asia Minor, at Pergamos. And his name was Osculopius. He was one of the father of the gods. There were many of them. They would have many of them in every society. And then you move on over here. You move on over here to Greece or Athens. And they had a father of the gods, Zeus. Then you move on over here to Rome. And they had a father of the gods there. He was Jupiter. But they had others they would call father of the gods. They would apply, they would have thousands of gods just down here in Egypt. And the father of the gods down here in Egypt could be any number of, of these gods or goddesses. And that would be Osiris or Amun Ra. And then if you move on over here to. And I can't get to all these gods, but you move over here to England in the Celtic society, and they called the father of the gods there Balder. You remember somebody say Balder Dash? It probably came from that, because that's an old English expression to say, I don't believe that. Balder Dash. And whenever you get to studying a series of books, that I've got called The Golden Bow. Now some of you have got one volume on it. I've got the 13 volume set. When you go into that, you're going to see all these people, all these gods connected together. And they called these gods, which was their ancestors. They called these gods D-A-I-M-O-N-I-O-N. -I 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 Diamonion or demon. And this did not have an evil connotation in the ancient world. They had good demons and bad demons. Let me just read a couple of these things. This is one of the articles I believe I got off the internet. And I've got others out of Hastings and McClinic and Strong. And now, uh, a demon or D-A-E-M-O-N is 
a paranormal, often malevolent. Malevolent is the exact opposite of benevolent. Benevolent means to give you access to good things. But they had benevolent and malevolent demons. But they were called benevolent when they first came on the scene in the ancient world. They were benevolent to everybody. They were gods that was for your good. Hercules was a good god. They had the bad gods of the underworld. The bad demons, the bad demons were uh, Styx, Hades, Pluto, these and many others, they were the bad gods. The good gods were like Hercules and Perseus and the list will go on and on. And they all had their, Hercules had 12 labors he had to go into the underworld and fulfill and conquer these bad gods. That was, it was all about at the end of the harvest, October 31st, the end of the harvest, everything had been harvested that had come in through the summer and they knew it was going to be darkness, dark, for all the months until you get back up to spring. And it was all about the crops. They thought these gods came and stole the crops and took them down in the underworld. And they had to resurrect in the spring. And Tammuz was said to be the fish god that rose in the spring over here in Babylon. And it was Ostera. or Ishtar, that resurrected Tammuz in the spring. We get the word Easter from that. That was an English word for the tree deity. For the tree deity. Now all these gods came, these were their ancestors. It was ancestor worship. Now let me, let me read some more to you that I get out of my books here. The original Greek word daemon does not carry the negative connotation initially understood by the implementation of koine daemonion. Didn't have a negative connotation. Those were good gods originally. If you have a good demon, you have to have a bad demon. In the first century, they knew that. That was a good ancestor or a bad ancestor. I've said it before. That's carried its way into our society in every phase of our society. You go to a movie and you look at a cartoon. I don't know if they have them this day and time, but uh, Bugs Bunny would have a cartoon on one shoulder. He'd have a demon on one shoulder. And he'd have a, what's amazing, that always have the good demon having a halo around their head, and that's the sun god. And he'd be whispering good things in this year. And then you'd have a, what's funny, it's really funny. Because you'd have this bad demon in a little red suit with horns and a tail, a little pitchfork, whispering in this ear. And the thing is, when you get to studying the little halo, the sun god is the same thing as the one with the red suit. It's funny. And you find that in cartoons. It's crept into our society there. A demon, and he's, he said you have to look at this from both sides of the fence. In the first century, especially before the first century, they considered demons good. They brought you good fortune. The crops in the spring. The word demon, daemonion, means to distribute fortunes. But fortunes was more than just money. It was position. It was crops. You get to be elected to public office. You get money. You get a windfall of any kind. And that was a good demon. When you go into the, I'm thinking of a dozen things at once. When you go into McClinic and Strong, uh, not McClinic, Hastings Encyclopedia of Origin, Religion, look up everything you can look up. You're going to get into fairies. There's an entire section on fairies. The same thing that the Celts over here in England called fairies the Celts, that's what the Romans, where they had Jupiter being the father of the gods, that's what the Romans called genius, a gifted person. If you're a genius, you have 
basically fortunes in your corner. You're going to be able to make lots of money, make lots of things happen if you're a genius. And you've got fortunes. This is the same thing that they called, that the Jews called demons. Now you're not going to get this out of a verse. You get this by studying from one end of the Bible to the other, studying these wonderful historians, McClinic and Strong, and the Hastings. But you've got to look up more than demons. You've got to look up fairies. You have to look up Celts. You've got to start looking up uh, guardians. And every one of these will interchange. You'll be reading about fairies, and they'll say, these guardians... Guardians. And they will just call them guardians just out of the clear blue. That's the same thing as guardian angels. There's no such thing as guardian angels. If God's declared the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, everything's not yet done, why does he need somebody to help him do it? He, has, he needs angels to help him do it? Let me show you a verse where they get guardians. Where they get guardian angels. Over here, remember, angel, angel, angelos. If you notice, I connect one thing from one part of the Bible to another part of the Bible to something over here to over here. You're going to have to understand, all these father of the gods were nothing but a picture of Nimrod. That's what they were. Is he our ancestor? Well, yeah. It was just Nimrod in different forms. And as they would move into new cultures, they would add a little here, a little there. But they kept the basics of it. They were all virgin born. They all had resurrected. I've heard preachers say, uh, no one had ever resurrected. <laughs> there are these gods of the ancient world that they worship, they weren't resurrected. Every one of them were resurrected. <laughs> Tammuz was resurrected in mythology, not really resurrected. But in mythology, they were considered resurrected. The whole idea of Ishtar or Easter is the resurrecting of Tammuz in that they mourned for Tammuz 40 days. The Roman Catholics brought that into the church and renamed it Lent. Now, I don't have time to go through that. I've done it on many other messages. Now, I want to read some of these to you. Where did I say I was going to go? Over here to Hebrews. This is one of the places in Hebrews, New Testament. And I'm going to read a little bit of this. I'm going to stay on this subject. I preached on demons for about three years on Sunday night, and I have not gotten to all of it at all. Because you have to study all the cultures of the ancient world to understand there was no such thing as demons. Demon means to distribute fortunes. And you'll find that in all these... i got a stack of books this high. I can't bring them all to church. i got one called The Devil. The writer of it's a secular writer, and he goes right into the gods of the ancient world. First page. That's what they called them. And it's come into the church. It is the church that's polluted it. The historians know more about it than the church people. Hollywood producers know more about it. It's crazy. If you actually study history, study biblical history, get the McClinic and Strong. It's 12 volumes. It is a treasure. I've said this before. If I couldn't get another set of these, I wouldn't take $100,000 for these. I wouldn't take a million dollars for them. This is the only set left in creation. I wouldn't take a million dollars for them. The amount of information is phenomenal. But you've got to study the culture they were in. You've got to study the gods they worship. Move over to another culture. And you'll find it has a lot of the same things. The Jews said demons had to be back to their abode by dawn. And that's a vampire. Hastings, you look a vampire, precedes Bram Stoker's Dracula thousands of years. You look up Dracula, now you look up vampires, and it'll tell you they had to be back to their abode by dawn. You look into the fairies of the Celts, they had to be back by dawn. You know why that is? 
men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. The demon is in man. Demon is distributing fortunes. What is it everybody strives for? Money or things or stuff or position or power or recognition so they can distribute fortunes to themselves. Not just money, but everything money will buy. That's the whole problem with the world. The love of money is the root of all evil. Love of money, philogoria. Comes from philos and A R G U R Y. Philos means an affection, augury means silver or shining. The reason man wants silver is so he can shine in the dark. And that's the moon worshippers. The moon was always represented as the tree goddess, the giver of all divine gifts to men. That's why you put the gifts under the tree. You know how much verification I've got on that documentation? Tons of it. The reason people can't find these things out, they read a few verses and say, I think this means, what do you think? You've been in a Baptist Sunday school class. It's dumb. The so-called Sunday school teacher read a verse. Does anybody know what this means? What does it mean to you? What does it mean to you? And what do you think about this? I don't care what anybody thinks. If they do, if they don't know nothing, I want to tell that teacher sit down and shut up. If you don't, what did they make you a teacher for? If you're going to ask the class what it means. Has anybody ever been in one of those places? Yes. Dumb. Who cares what people think? The definition means this. But how are you going to know all that if you don't go to all these things? You're not. Philogoria, we get our word argue from augury. You like to shine with your opinion. <laughs> the Bible says God resists the proud. Resist means to make war with, and tautasomai, and proud means to shine above others. Those who want to shine have a love of money, a love of self. You're at war with God. He's, God is at war with you. And in order to do all that, you've got to be friends with the world to distribute fortunes. If you're going to be in the music business, if you're going to be in the real estate business, whatever you're in, you're going to have to really have the world liking you to get their business, aren't you? Well, if you're friends with the world, you're an enemy of God. Well, how are we going to make a living? I don't know. <laughs> Everybody's got to work a job. But you don't have to play footsie with the world, do you? Let me read some more of this. He says, A demon is considered an unclean spirit, sometimes a fallen angel. Boy, that's another story. I don't believe in that at all. A spirit of... De and then he says, The spirit of a deceased human. That's an ancestor, isn't it? Some of these guys, you can tell, haven't studied it enough. He got that right. Let me see if I got something here on this. Next page. I want to show you how you document things. All right. Now. What Oops, I got to get to Hebrews, don't I? This is where some of the so-called people get guardian angels. Angel means messenger. It doesn't mean a heavenly messenger. It can be. It can be anyone who is a messenger. A-G-G-E-L-O-S. I put it over here. Anybody who's a messenger can be heavenly of this earth. When the Bible says, He shall give His angels charge over thee, and they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. David was saying that, speaking of himself, and Satan quoted to Jesus in the fourth chapter of Matthew, in the fourth chapter of Luke, we are going to deliver up God's people in our hands. Those that are stronger than others, we're going to deliver them. God's messengers will... The message that comes from the mouth of a messenger of God is going to deliver God's people so they don't trip. And they get this over in Hebrews. In Hebrews. And I... Gosh, if I get started on this, I shouldn't have said anything about it take me all day long to go through this but I'm not going to. I'm going to cut it off after a few words I want to try to. They get it from in verse 13 of chapter 1. But to which of the angels said he at any time sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? 
This goes all the way back to the first verse. God who at sundry times, sundry means various times, polumerous. Have you ever, anybody old enough to remember drug stores when they would say malts, uh, shakes, sundry items, sundry, sundry, huh? No, no, I'm talking about sundry items. Sundry means various kinds of items. This word sundry, the word sundry that we used on drug stores back then, or a soda fountain, they'd have sundry items. You could go in there and buy band-aids or whatever, and it's turned out to be drug stores today. And in diverse, or diverse, D-I-V-E-R-S-C, -E various times and manners, spake in time passed unto the fathers by the prophets, who are the angels of God. Because when you go on down here, every time you see angel being so much better than the angels, it's talking about these prophets back here in verse 1. Then he goes on down to verse 5, For which of the angels said he, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee? That's back to the prophets of the first verse. People have struggled with this because they make the prophets and the angels different people, but the prophets were the messengers of God. And the word angel means messenger. And then he goes on down here to verse 6, Let all the angels of God worship him. Everyone who is a messenger of God worship God. In verse 7, And the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers the Torgikos. That's not the common word minister. L-I-T-O-U-R. G-I-K-O-S. L-I-T-O-U-R-G-I-K-O-S. That's not the common word minister. We get the word liturgy from that. Liturgikos. Uh, what verse was I in? Okay, ministers, a flame of fire. God said, is not my word of fire to Jeremiah 5 and 14? Is it my word of fire? And fire coming from the mouth of the prophets in of the two witnesses, which is the priest and the king. I don't have time to go into that. And God hath made us priests and kings. Fire from their mouths is the word of God being preached from the mouth of his angels. So he says, I've made my ministers a flame of fire coming from their mouth. And then he goes on down here. And he's talking about the same thing, liturgikos, in verse 13. But which of the angels, the prophets, the preachers, said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? He's saying that to Christ, not to me. Are they not all ministering spirits? That word minister there is the same word down here when he says ministers in verse 7 it's for liturgikos it means beneficial, beneficial public officials public officials in the kingdom of God in the church liturgikos ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. This is where they get ministering spirit. It means a public official taking care of the people. The common you got the common word minister is diakonos. But it's not this word. D I A K O N I A or Konos. K O N O S. That's a household slave and the first and the first deacons, that's our word deacon a household slave that doesn't get paid, and he was, he was set in charge to, to feed the widow and the orphan. He wasn't set up as a deacon to tell the preacher, to hire and fire the preacher and tell him what time to quit preaching. It's, but how are you going to know this unless you don't study from one end to the other? So this is where they get this ministering spirits, except they take a public official, which is me, a public official over the church. Some people say they don't believe in pastors of churches. Well, you tell Jeremiah that when he says God is against the pastors of the flock. In Jeremiah the 
third chapter in Ezekiel, the 30, third and thirty-fourth chapter, said God says, "I'll require my sheep. My I'll require these sheep at the hands of these pastors that's lying to Israel." It means you don't believe in pastors. You don't believe you believe in the same thing that Jeremiah was condemning them for. Now, I'm going to read some to you out of some of these articles. The ancient Greek word demon, demon denotes a spirit or divine power, much like the Latin genius. I said they will cr crisscross these. They'll crisscross these definitions. And when you read fairies out of Hastings, they'll be mentioning genie, jinn, guardians, demons, all in the same context. If you believe in one, when you say, Jim, where do you get these things out, out of all this information I've got? I will recommend books for you to read. Not a better set of books than the Hastings and the McClinic and Strong. They're two sets. One is 12 volumes, the other's. You want to learn this stuff, you can learn it on your own. But you have to go a little bit of everywhere to pick it up. I, there's no way I can give you everything in my library. Not in a year. And read it all. Sometimes I'll pick up and read a, two or three pages, and then I'll pick up another and read two or three pages. You can't believe what you get out of fairies out of Hastings. It's unbelievable. In fact, let me read a little bit about the fairies. And I'll... All right, fairies. When you start in on it, remember, I may read something over here that says you got to drive a genie into a bottle. You got to drive a vampire into a bottle. <laughs> Same thing. You get your wishes from a genie and they'll tell you that vampires were demons. The same thing. Now, under fairy, I mark some spots. There's little difference in attributing characteristics. Now, these were written, first produced in 1906, before the church had gotten so corrupt as it is in this past century. 1906, before the Charismatics got started, before the Pentecostals got to speaking in tongues all over America. And they're going to tell you what fairies were, what demons. If you believe in fairies, you've got to believe in genies. If you believe in demons, you've got to be, believe in demons and fairies. The only fairy is you and those guys in San Francisco. I guess. I don't, I don't have nothing against them. They're out there in the world. I have more against a Baptist preacher than I do those people at San Francisco. If, if, you, if you're of that persuasion, I don't like preachers more than you don't like them because they don't know what any of this means. I had a lesbian come here years ago, 15 years ago. She said, is lesbianism the, a sin? I said, yes, but not any worse than any other presumptuous, planned sin. It's no worse than adultery. And preachers say, yeah, but they put lesbians to death over in the Old Testament. Well, they put adulterers to death in the Old Testament too. They killed you for, they, it was a capital sin to, to do work on the Sabbath. It was a capital sin to curse the king or slap your parents. You could die for that too. People say, don't you believe in capital punishment? For which capital sin? If we're going to... The only place I believe in capital punishment is in the church. You mean you believe we ought to kill people in the church? No, we ought to put them to death. Death does not mean annihilation. Death is, is the word thanos or thanatos. It means to separate from them. If people are living... In presumptuous sin, planning their sin, I had, I've had people come here sleeping around with all the women they could. You know what we did? Separated from them. There's a man having an affair with his stepmother in the first, fifth chapter of 1 Corinthians. Paul said, with such an one, know not to eat. Don't fellowship with him. Don't have anything to do with him. After you rebuke him twice, Titus 3.10, withdraw from him. Turn him over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. He insists on living that way. Leave him alone. And I'm going through demon right now. Let me read some more of this about fairies. To let you see. Celtic and Teutonic fairy superstition. Now the Teutons 
were up here north of this area that's called the Bible region, and they're up in the Scandinavian countries, which is above, which is above Germany. Scandinavia, Scandinavia is Norway, Sweden, Denmark, uh, and they had the gods up there, and these were where the Saxons came from. Saxons and the Normans, and they came, they ended up settling down in England. Norman comes from a word that means North men. And they had a god that was the father of the gods up there. And they're the son of the father of the gods was Thor. And he was the god with the lightning bolts. And this is where Hitler sent Himmler over here to Tibet to find the race, a superior race, that was called an Aryan race. And when you when you get into you get into Hastings, look up Aryan, A R Y N. And then that will tell you see Arthurian legends about King Arthur. And then they will tell you that these were thinly veiled sun and tree gods. And this thing goes on and on. So every one of these, every one of these, and the father of the gods up here in the Scandinavian world, remember who he was? Woden. Woden, and he was called Odin. Had a variation to their names. We get the word Woden's Day, Wednesday from him. So whenever you go, let me read some more about from the fairies. All right. Boy, the, the stuff we get into, this every sentence will go whoo, in my mind. We'll go off into a thousand directions. He says the little difference in it at attributing characteristics and actions between the Celtic fairies and Teutonic Scandinavian elves, dwarfs, trolls. These were all fairies. Trolls, needless to say, were bad fairies. They would hide under a bridge and devour the children that came along. They were bad fairies. I was scared of them as a kid. You scared of them as a kid. <laughs> In much the same cycle of stories, and beliefs is common to both. What they did, they held on to certain characteristics. They all had to be hid in a bottle. They had to be put in a bottle. And you'll find the, the vampires, they were thrown into a fire after it was corked up. And anything that crawled out, they had to kill it because it might become a vampire. A bug might become a vampire, a worm. It's crazy. But among other European folk, Slavic and Latin. Now, Slavic, Slavic is right up here. The Slavic world is up here. That's what used to be called Yugoslavia. Mike's been there, Bulgaria. Now that's Herzegovina and all of these uh, Slavic nations. That's the Slavs. And by the way, Bram Stoker wrote Dracula concerning the Slavic people. That's why they talk like this. You know, I love to count. <laughs> One Bible, two Bibles. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. I love the count on Sesame Street. Don't y'all just love the count? He is hilarious. He'll count anything. One car. Two cars. And then he'll laugh and the lightning bolt will come down. That even has its origin among the Slavs. And you had uh, Vlad the Impaler about 800 years ago, and he conquered his enemy driving stakes to him, 100,000 of them in his country, when his enemies would come, He'd drive the stake up their middle and hang them on stakes by the thousands out there. That's probably why Bram Stoker wrote this. But when you go into vampires in Hastings, I can't begin to tell you everything that's coming to my mind. And I thought, I'll just stack these up over here and read some of them to the people. I don't just look for a definition of a word. If I say something, there's a thousand things behind what I'm saying that I could say, and I've spent going on 60 years studying this stuff, 
and all I've got is a jumble of a whole bunch of definitions of words going on in my head and on my papers. All I knew to do, all I know to do, is throw them at you. And if you want to study them, you can. And I'll advise you which ones to study. Y'all realize how much the world. Remember, I said once they said, "Let us make us a name." This they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they've imagined to do. Their imagination is go haywire. Is is Balder haywire? Yeah. Is Marduk haywire? Yeah. It's just nuts. It's imagination. Is Jupiter? And all these were called demons. Even when Paul ran into the Epicureans, who were pagans. There in Acts the seventeenth chapter, and he got ran into the Epicureans and to the uh, uh, Stoics. They said, "This man is speaking to us of strange gods." It says gods in the English text, but those translators knew what that word meant. It's the word daemonion in the original text. So those pagans were saying, <coughs> "Excuse me." Mm. Mm. Oh, excuse me, I'm getting over some bronchitis. Uh, see, he's talking to us about strange demons. The pagans were saying that. They caught. How can I explain that clearly to you? Paul says in the tenth chapter of First Corinthians, these pagan Corinthians are offering their, their, they're offering their sacrifices to. It says devils. But when you go into defining it. It's daemonion. Paul said these gods at Corinth were demons. They're not real. They're imaginary. You understand what I'm saying? The thing that is, the only thing that's true is man's heart is evil. The heart is deceitful above all things. A thing is neuter gender, isn't it? Right? A thing. A piano is not a he or a she. It's a thing, neuter gender. Every time you define the word daemonion, or what we call demon, it's neuter gender. <sighs> so, if your heart is more is deceitful above all things, your heart is more deceitful than demons if there is such a thing. A demon would be a pansy upside your heart, a sissy. Men's hearts are evil. They'll do anything to distribute fortunes. They'll get very devious and underhanded. They will lie. I've had people lie about me. And you know why? Envy. And envy is over things and position and stuff. Jesus said, the Pharisees did this because they envied me. He got their attention. When Paul got to Antioch, he got to Antioch, his first stop up here in Turkey, in Galatia. They ran him out of town. The Bible says because of envy, he had the whole town was coming out to see Paul, and it was the envy of the Pharisees. They said, let's kill him. Let's destroy him. Envy is the most evil thing that goes on in a man's heart. It produces his orge, the wrath of his covetousness, where he says, I want to get him. And they start imagining things about me and other believers that's not true. And then they spread it as truth, and it's a lie. Jesus said they hated me without cause. If they hated him without cause, they have to hate us for no reason. Now, I've had people leave here and hate me. I'm going, why do they leave? Mike would say, envy. Mary would say something along that line. And I'm just loving them along the way. Some young men have come in here thinking, I'm as smart as he is. Well, you may be. You hadn't studied for 60 years. You hadn't gone through the living hell on earth that I've gone through. And God didn't place you in this ministry to be the head of it and the under shepherd. Just sit and listen. What do we do, Jim? It's required in stewards that a man be found faithful, not that he be found profound and rich and somebody and important. If you're faithful, God will lead you to some position. If you insist on getting into a position, he's going to take you nowhere. I didn't start this ministry. I'm the only teacher it's ever had. I started a Bible class in my house, and it grew without my effort. All I've done is teach. I've had people come and say, can I film this? Yeah, I guess you can. Go ahead. 
Glenn did that. He said, can I film this? I said, yeah, go ahead. He said, can I drill the hole in your floor over there in my basement at my house where we started? Yeah, go ahead. Can I put this camera up on this little bitty camera about that big? Yeah, go ahead. After he made a bunch of them, he said, you need to watch these. They're turning out real good. I said, I will one day. About six months later, I looked at one. I said, that's coming out pretty good. And he said, I can get this on public access. I said, what's that? I didn't try to do anything. I simply said, when I got out of the hospital, that super stay I had when I nearly died over a two and a half year period, I said, Lord, I'm going to serve you. I don't care if I never have any recognition again. And I loved having recognition. I wanted recognition from the world. I wanted to sell more houses than anybody. I wanted to sing better than anybody else. I don't want any of that now. When you quit making deals with God about distributing fortunes to your life and being the preacher of the church, that's a fortune that some people consider a fortune until you become that. And everybody wants to kill you. Let me read some more from this fairy thing. All right. It's funny. A supernatural race existing in the fancy of the folk of the North and West Europe. That's why Hitler went, sent Himmler over here, his chicken farmer, the head of his SS that would murder all the Jews in the world if he could. He sent him over here to Tibet and the Svastis. And Svastika was the sign of the sun. It was actually the wheel of the year. It had all the festivals on that wheel of the year and it's the Big Dipper in its various phases. Go on the line and look up Big Dipper and you'll see the Big Dipper in the form of a swastika. They would see it up here. And then they would see it over here in the in the summer or fall. They would see it down here and it actually made a swastika. Like so. They'd see it in different seasons. And that was called the Wheel of the Year. That was the Big Dipper. So Himmler sends him over here. And Hitler was looking for a superior race. And this goes back to the sons of God marrying the daughters of man. And that's not... They said that was fallen angels, which were demons. The word angel, every time you look at it in the New Testament Greek, it's masculine gender. It's not women with fluffy looking hair. Angel means messenger. God always called his messengers to be male. So angel is always masculine gender, and demon is neuter gender. They can't be the same thing. Besides that, the fallen angels are locked in Tartarus, the lowest pit of hell in the second chapter of Second Peter. What's evil? You know what's evil in the world? Where Satan goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. It's your heart. Boy, men will men who don't think they will do evil things. I was such a good boy when I was a kid. I was the best little kid. When daddy would come in, Clyde would be beating me up. And Clyde was a lot bigger than me. He'd whip both of us. And I thought, this is not right. Clyde's been picking on me and now daddy's going to come in and beat both of us. Clyde would be slapping me around, throwing me, pick it at me. And I thought, this is just not right. And I've learned through all these years that that's the way men think and men feel. So, where was I going? I was going somewhere with this. All right. Well, let, me, let me finish reading this. Supernatural race. Every one of these systems was looking for a superior Aryan race. You, you know that's what Hitler was doing. He said the Jews were inferior. They had killed Christ, so he's going to kill them and do God a favor. And he didn't know that he was working in God's plan in the 70 weeks of Daniel. He didn't know that, did he? So they were all looking for a supernatural race, an Aryan race. And they said it was the fallen angels. Not true. I don't need to go into that. Excuse me, I started to say some stuff, but I'd be half an hour doing it. A natural race existing in the fancy of the people of the North and the West, a scientific, that was also, you can connect this superior race to Atlantis. 
that was supposed to be a superior race of intelligence that the Atlantic over it washed it away sounds like the flood doesn't it that's what Atlantis was probably supposed to be the flood and they were supposed to be a superior race and I've been looking into how many people did they estimate was on the earth before the flood, right when the flood came. They estimate some of the best estimators, and they say all that you do is guess, and they showing the length of time these guys lived and how they were having babies. They guess on this European area, there were over a billion people. Whew. We're not talking about all over the world where there's seven billion today. We're not talking about America. We're just talking about in that little Mediterranean region. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the earth became evil. Uh, supernatural race, while the popular idea mainly regards the fairies whose occupation it is to dance in the moonlight. The moon, the Lord Moon was the... Gosh, i got so much to say about the Lord Moon. He was called Mene. Which means numberer. The moon numbered the seasons, didn't it? And we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, there in Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Rulers of the darkness, what rule the darkness? The moon. The moon worshippers were those who loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Vampires. Fairies. They danced in the moonlight. Isn't that amazing? Y'all realize how many things I'm trying to pitch at you at once. And I can't get to all of them. I'm barely getting started this morning. I've got to get to Satan. <coughs> Satan is a common word throughout the Old Testament. It means when you look up the word adversary, majority of the time it will be Satan. S-A-W-T-A-N is the way it's pronounced. It's the same word as when you look up Satan. It means adversary. And David was called the Satan of the Philistines. And when you see that this is something that really puzzles people, look over here in... Let me kind of hit this real slow for you. Over here in 2 Samuel... David is coming to the end of his life. His son Solomon is going to be the king of Israel in the next chapter, which is the first chapter of 1 Kings. And over here in, and this has puzzled many people. 2 Samuel. If y'all don't mind me just reading some of this stuff out of these, maybe it'll challenge you to get sets of these books and learn these things. I don't use one definition to understand something. I go into so many areas. My wife will tell you I have studied for years. I've studied till my brains fall out, and I just stick stuff them back in and keep going. I mean, it is just, huh? That's what I saw on the table. That's what you saw on the table. As soon as we got out to this house, we moved to. Didn't take me a month for to get the tables full of books everywhere. Now, 2 Samuel, this has bothered a lot of people. This has bothered a lot of people, and I want to try to help straighten this out for you. All right. Look at verse 1 of chapter 24, 2 Samuel. Again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. I want you to count how many people we got in our army. And the Bible says that he had a million eight hundred thousand people in his army. And he names all of his great mighty men of valor in the 23rd chapter. As though he did it himself. Now there was a time over in 1 Samuel where Saul was chasing David. And David only had 400 men with him. And Saul was chasing David with thousands because Saul thought that David was trying to steal his kingdom. Because God had anointed David, he had Samuel anoint David, and say, Saul, your days are over with. You haven't obeyed me at all there in the 13th, 14th, actually 11th through the 15th chapter 
of First Samuel. You've never, you've never obeyed me. Now, and he moved David to number Israel. Now look at First Chronicles' account of this. Look at First Chronicles. When David numbers Israel, God is angry because he's taking credit for we, what he had done. In First Chronicles 21, but if you don't know the meaning of Satan, you're not going to understand this. First Chronicles 21. All right. First Chronicles 21 and verse 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Oh, Satan provoked him. The word Satan and the word adversary and God at this point was David's adversary because David was taking credit for numbering Israel. God in this case, Satan in this case is God. The word Satan just means adversary. Look over here in 1 Samuel, the 29th chapter. 1 Samuel, the 29th chapter. You have to look these words up to know what they mean. I've got so much on this. I may read something on Satan this week and come back next week and read some more on Satan. Satan. You can't explain Satan without going to the definition and looking at all these words. All right. Look here in 1 Samuel 29. I'll get in a minute here. Hold on a minute. 29. Now, David. David has been chased by Saul since chapter 19. Let me see if I can say, how much time do I have, Mike? 26. All right, maybe I can get through this and get back to my definitions out of fairies. Now, in the, in the 13th, actually starting in 11, through the 15th chapter, Saul is king of Israel. And Saul doesn't do the will of God. He rebels against God completely in the 15th chapter. And God sends Samuel down to the house of Jesse in southern Judah. Saul is from northern Israel. Not northern Israel. He's from southern Israel. But he's from the tribe of Benjamin. And the king, that's the 12th son of, that's the 12th son of Jacob. And the king has to come from the 4th son of Jacob. 4th son which would be Judah. And David is in Judah, and God repents himself of making Saul king because he intentionally made him king because he had the wrong heart. And they asked for a king there in the 8th chapter. God said, I'll give you a king, and he'll be the wrong king, and I'll turn his heart. He was a good man when he started, but when you get to the 15th chapter, David is a shepherd boy in the 16th chapter, and Samuel comes down and anoints him king, but in the eyes of the people, Saul is king till the 31st chapter where he dies. And David is king in the eyes of God. In the 16th chapter, the 17th chapter, he goes out, slays Goliath. The 18th chapter, he goes into the court of Saul. Saul gets mad because the women are singing praises to David. And in the 19th chapter, Saul declares war on David. And then David ends up running over here to the land of the Philistines, which is the Gaza Strip to us today, or the ancient land of the Anakims. Anak, the, the tall men, the giants, which were probably ancestors of Goliath. Well, Saul is out to get David. The Philistines at this point, in this chapter, are going to attack Saul in Mount Gilboa in northern Israel. And David, who is living with the Philistines over here, says, I want to go, I want to take up the rear to King Achish. 
Now, Achish has given David a city to live in. Over, he's running from Saul, and he runs into southern, the Gaza Strip is right down here. This is Israel, and that's the land of Anak. Anak. And David is, wants to bring up the rear with his army, and ha he wants to sandwich the Philistines. Even though Saul hates David and wants to get David, Saul is up here. David said, can I bring up the rear with my armies? Well, Achish, who likes David, and he's been friends with David, he thinks David's intentions are to help him conquer Saul. Well, he goes to the princes of the Philistines, and he tries to present David as a friend, as one of their allies. And here's what happens when he says, when this happens. In verse 2 of chapter 29, the lords of the Philistines passed on by hundreds and by thousands, but David and his men passed on in the re-reward. That means to bring up the rear. Ooh, that's not where the princes of the Philistines, they don't want to be sandwiched between David's army and Saul's army. Then said the princes of the Philistines, what do these Hebrews hear? And Achish, one of the kings of the Philistines, said unto the princes of the Philistines, Is not this the David, the servant of Saul? Even though they didn't know that Saul was chasing David to kill him. David's allegiance to Saul was without measure. Even though Saul wanted to kill him, he spared his life twice when he had him at the point of death. He said, Back away, that's the Lord's anointed. Is not this David the servant of Saul, the king of Israel, which hath been with me these days and these years? Achish said, He's been with me a long time. Stand away from that Saul that wants to kill him. I have found no fault in him since he fell unto me unto this day. And the princes of the Philistines were wroth with Achish. And the princes of the Philistines said unto him, Make this fellow return. Tell him to go away. We don't want David behind us that he may go again to his place, and thou hast appointed him, and let him not go down with us to battle, lest in the battle he be a Satan to us. The word is Satan. It says adversary, but it's the word Satan. You see, um, that's a common word, adversary, in the Old Testament. It can apply to Satan rebelling in heaven when there was sin found in him there in the 28th chapter of Ezekiel. Could be that. But it can be you. It can be somebody fighting me in the church. You are my Satan, my adversary. And nearly every time you find adversary, it's the word Satan. And usually it's in a good sense. It just is a common Hebrew word and Greek word that means adversary. One who opposes an opponent who fights you. And I've got, let me go back to this paper here. I'm going to have to go into Satan, Diabolos, Damon. It's not Diabolos I don't believe in. When people say, well, if Satan fell from heaven, Damonion didn't fall from heaven. That's man's imagination, distributing fortunes. Diabolos, I'm going to go into that, not now, I need to stop. Diabolo, the method of casting out or casting down. And how are demons cast out of us? Huh? I can't hear. By the finger of God. If I were the finger of God, cast out devils, then is the kingdom of God come unto you. Kingdom of God was an old ancient term for Israel because God was their king long before Saul. You know, in verse 9, he calls him an angel of God. Well, he is. He's a messenger. It's just David was the angel of God. Well, he is. He's an angel of God, a messenger of God, but he's a Satan to the Philistines. But God was a Satan to David when he numbered Israel. Can you see that? 
Let me just read a couple of these sayings. <laughs> Amazing. I hadn't even got to one paragraph in this. They had, uh, let me just read some of this. A natural race arose existing in the fancy of the folk of the North and Western Europe. A scientific explanation of the belief must take a wider sweep. And while the popular idea mainly regards the fairies whose occupation it is to dance in the moonlight, whose occupation it, uh, dance in the moonlight, our investigation must also include house fairies. They were called house demons among Israel. And we get the word ghost, which was a haunted house. Those were demons that stayed back at home when the owner was away to guard the house. They were good demons. That's what a haunted house was. Good demons. And I said it a while back. I was watching advertisements on TV and this Walking Dead came on. I thought, how much truth that is. All these vessels of wrath out here are walking dead. And they're trying to devour us. And Satan walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. I believe that is the evil that's in man's heart. And I thought, and that was ghoul, G-O-U-L. Those were ghouls. And when I got on the internet, looked up ghoul, that is a demon in Arabian society. Arab society. They all go back to the same culture. Fairies of the woods. Gosh, I can go somewhere with that. And of streams. Remember when 7,000 attacked, 7,000 Israelites attacked about 128,000 of Ben Hadad's people over there in Second uh, Kings, the 20th chapter. Not Second Kings, that's, what's his name? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, that was in the... Uh, uh, 20th chapter of 1st Kings. What's his name? <laughs> That's funny. I got all these things going on in my mind. And they said they had demons of the woods. Israel said that. They had demons of the fields, demons of the highway. And one of the Greeks' demons of the highway was called Pan. We think of panoramic means the all. That's what I keep trying to tell you. The Bible is a panoramic view of good versus evil. It's of the demons versus God's people. And we get the word panoramic, and pan was said to be the little demon that had the little horns and went around with a pan flute, playing a little and dancing around on his hooves. That was pan. And another name for pan I read out of one of these books he was the god of the highways. He was called you hodos That's amazing, isn't it? You hodos That is the word prosper. If you read enough of these things, I would that you prosper and be in health. Uh, so these charismatics need to start preaching. I would that you'd have Pan, the god of the highways, with you. Right? It comes from you. In Hodos, meaning a well way, and those people that John wrote that to in 3 John 2, Jesus said, I am the way. They knew who Yuhodos was. That was Pan. If you watch, you read, read these intellectual books. Intellectual means understand. How do you know what they're saying is true? I crisscross what they're saying with what the Bible says and what superstition said and in the first century they all believed they were under some kind of spell and they lived in fear constantly and they were running around trying to get somebody to get the spell off of them there was a spell all right it was of sin it was their imagination when you get to making up your own doctrine watch out what you make up you'll get involved in your imagination now let me read some more of this Listen to this. They had fairies of the woods, fairies of the stream, and other parts of wild nature. And remember, 
when 7,000 whipped up on these over 100,000 servants of Ben-Hadad, the Syrian king, the Syrians said, well, your God is the God of the woods. What they were saying, your God, they said, your God is the God of the mountains. Your demon is the demon of the mountains. He can't whip us on the plains. God said, you've done, stuck your foot in your mouth now. And he told a prophet to go to Ben-Hadad, go attack these people out here. They said, I'm a demon of the mountains. And I don't like that. Let me show them who I am. And the Bible says, the children of Israel encamped among the among the Syrians, and they filled the plain, and the Israelites, like two little flocks of kids, and they went out that day and killed 127,000 Syrians. Only 7,000 Israelites, that's all they had to fight, against over 100,000 Syrians. God said, I'll show you who the demons are. That's what they were saying. Let me read some more of this. From the abstract noun, fatum, or fate, that's where you get fairy. Well, who is the fates? God. Fate was derived a late Latin or Italian pronoun, fate, equivalent to, I can't read that, parse or something, M makes Roman equivalent, Hence, in Romance languages, Romance comes from the word Rome. Roman languages, Latin, Spanish. Most of your Latin languages, Italian, they come, they are called Romantic language, Portuguese. The words for fairy are fee, F-E-E, -E, with connection of fees and the fates, from fatum came in medieval Latin fatar to enchant. Whoops. Y'all know where my mind goes with that. <laughs> Every direction. Enchant. All of a sudden I'm thinking, and notice how this crisscrosses. Enchant. What am I thinking of when I'm thinking of enchant? First place in the Bible. Huh? Did the, the, the Nakash. Which is the word serpent. Means to enchant. To make feel good. One of the writers says it means to kill with the I. God says, if you partake of that tree, the first thing she did was look, look, and that's what killed her. When you start looking at sin, when you look to Christ there in Numbers, the 21st chapter, when God raised up and sent these fiery serpents into Israel to bite him, and whoever got bitten was died, he, he rose up, he told Moses to raise up this brazen serpent, whoever looks lives. And this is the same way, if, the, if Christ be lifted up, I'll draw all men, our men from every nation, tongue, and tribe to me who are elect. I think of kill with the eye. That's what enchant means. The, that is not the common word serpent. It means to make to feel good. It makes me think of the dragon of Revelation 13. Dragon is the word dracon. A drakon, it means to fascinate. <coughs> and they thought that a serpent, when certain animals, animals would stand in front of a serpent and the animal wouldn't move, they thought back then that the serpent was fascinating this animal, but the animal was usually standing there in fear for his life so he wouldn't move in case the serpent would get him. So I'm thinking of the dragon gave the beast its power, its authority. So I'm thinking of the dragon. That's going to take you all throughout the scriptures. Do I have any time? Okay. Let me read some more. 
from fatum, meaning to enchant, which becomes in the French, feist, the common phrase in romance, les dames fuck, enchanted ladies. That's what fairies were supposed to be. And you see them dancing around in the moonlight. It's just stupid stuff. If you believe in demons, you got to believe in these. And what do you get from a fairy? Wishes, don't you? Same thing you get from a genie. Thing, same, same thing you get when you distribute fortunes. Uh, from fee was formed a noun, pharis, enchantment, illusion. God shall stand strong delusion. He's going to delude people, and he's going to send an illusion, something you think is there is not, which was adopted into the people of fairyland, fairies. Elf comes from, now, St. Nicholas is a jolly old elf. He's a demon. I, I wrote these all these tracts over here, and when I was writing the one on St. Nicholas, I called him a demon. And they called me from the newspaper and said, you can't put this in the paper. You're calling Santa Claus a demon. I said, well, he is. They said, you've got to put a disclaimer on it. I said, wonderful. I want to do that. I want to put a disclaimer on everything I'm writing so that people say, well, who is this guy? Let's go look at him on TV. If you're going to try to destroy me, be sure and tell everybody, don't watch me at 10 o'clock every night on 176, okay? I've told people that before. Be sure and tell them, if you're going to just try to destroy grace and truth, do not watch us on Thursday night at 7 or Friday and, and Wednesday night at 7. And don't watch us through the middle of the week. Now, he comes on these stations, be sure, don't watch. And they will. Elf comes from the... <laughs> I said they intermix everything. It comes from Aleph, genius... Spritz, the German word elf was borrowed in the first century from the English word. Varieties of fairies. Light elves, dark elves, those are good and bad fairies. You're going to find that's true among the demons. Dwelling underground, underground, that was the, the evil gods in Rome that went down there to stop the crops from growing. And the distributing fortunes are getting the crops in the spring. Are separate from dwarves, perhaps the swordfar, who originated as maggots from Ymir's flesh. And that shows it, they all come out of man. It comes out of Nimrod. And likeness of man dwell in earth stones. And he says, light and dark elves is not clear. And elves are both light and dark. I think I know what they mean. Good and evil elves. And this is amazing. The trick is, uh, I may have to come back and read some more next week. Talking about the man when they awake in the morning or more or less, well, let me read the rest of that. Other kinds are associated with a house, with woods, fields, with waters. I know what all that means, having studied it for 100 years. And with mine scarcely to be distinguished from them off by night and make them travel long distances, sometimes using them as steeds. They weren't just little bitty flaky looking girls flying around. They were trolls. They were evil, devouring children. That is human flesh. Eat flesh and drink blood. And how, where does that take us? The man, when they awake in the morning, are more or less conscious of this. The trick is, is also alleged sometimes as an explanation of falling sickness. That takes us to the demon of Matthew 17. Remember, a man came to Jesus and said, My son is lunatic. Look up lunatic, and it comes from lunar. And it means moonstruck. Now, let me ask you a question. Somebody comes to you and says, My son is struck by the moon. Are you going to believe that? If you're the living God... Whose opinion was this that he was moonstruck? And what is it that's moonstruck? Vampires? Demons? Wolves? That was called shape-shifting. In all these cultures, shape-shifting 
was the ability to turn yourself into an animal. Where did shape shifting start? Huh? In the, In the garden. Satan turns himself into a serpent. Or God does that, makes him a serpent. And this thing goes on and on and on. You go into all these cultures, you study all these people, these books. I can't explain it fully. I'm just throwing stuff at you. I hope you can understand that. <laughs> Let me just... Lordy me, I can't get to all this. And the American Indian said when a child, when, it, when another Indian would fall into a fire, that was an ancestor pushing him into the fire. He may have had falling sickness. And when they said they had demons, it could be falling sickness, it could be epilepsy, it could be any kind of disease, and they'd attribute everything to one of their gods coming down and getting into their body and making them have sickness of some kind or to come into a windfall. That was what demons were. Falling sickness. In other ways, they torment men. The poltergeist... You can't even get into poltergeist. That's not some movie they made. That comes out of the ancient world. And the house fairy, when insulted, a favorite trick is to give men gold. Distribute fortunes. Which turns into worthless articles. And that's what it does, doesn't it? That's what wealth and riches. Distributing fortunes destroys your life. Fairies are often, often assist mortals. And they were also called men gods. That's what Hercules was. He was a man and he was a god. And when you look up demon, it will say deity under Damonion. And a deity is a god. How many gods are there? One. So when even when Strong says a deity, that's not true, is it? What it should have said was a mythological deity. Sufficiently rewarded with a little milk or food. St. Nicholas? Demon? Was he distributing fortunes to children? Well, yeah. Isn't this interesting? Gosh. Fairies in Christian lands, and they mean Roman Catholic, are generally regarded as pagans. Sacred names, signs, and things keep them at a distance. They said the way you kept a demon at a distance, you put him in a casket, ran running water over it. What is running water? Living water. Jesus tells a woman at the well, I'll give you living water. They said living water was water that flowed through mountain streams. They knew it was pure, that it didn't sit in one spot and stagnate. That's what they did in their cisterns. And under those rivers underground, they said those were living waters. So you had to put the demon, Damonion. Boy, notice the parallel. You had to put Damonion, which is self, under the living water of the Word of God. That actually drives the demon away. What does the Roman Catholics do to get rid of a vampire? Holy. Sprinkling with holy water. Holy water would be living water if that was holy, but that's not. Holy water is... Notice all of the parallels. And you're going to find that the fairies are just like the demons of... They danced in the moonlight, right? They had to be back to their abode by dawn. Same as a vampire. Same as a Jewish demon. Out of Judaica, 17 volume set of encyclopedias by the Jews. They were all the same. They had to be back to their place by dawn. I like reading this and connecting this with the Bible. It shows you how much pollution, how much imagination man's gotten into. There's no such thing as demons. There is a Satan, an adversary. And I want to get into this. There's two places in the Bible where Satan is equated with a man. One is in the 14th chapter of Isaiah. And the other is the 28th chapter of Ezekiel. He's equated with the prince of Tyre, which was the father of Jezebel, and his gods were Baal in the grove that were married down into Israel. And they were demons. And then you got, you got the 28th chapter of Ezekiel. It's compared with the, with the king of Babylon down here, 
on the Euphrates and with the prince of Tyre up here. And those are the two places that kept this sun and tree worship and the prince of Tyre, king of Babylon, Jezebel's father, she brought this, this demon fairy genie worship down that came from Babylon up here. And these are the sinners, the two great sinners of center of demon worship goes back to Nimrod and all of it started at Babel and it moved throughout all the world. I hope you can understand some of this. I'm trying to get you, I'm going to read some more on this next week. Gosh, there's, I've got in here uh, the tree of the fees, the tree of the fairies. I wonder what that is. That to distribute fortunes, all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Eve saw a tree that's good for food, pleasant to the eye, make her wise. And how many wishes do you get from a, a genie? You get three. All that's in the world. You can tie everything in the world to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. No, you can't get any other thing in the world, the fortunes of the world, under any other heading except that. Why, how do you know that? The Bible says so. That's all that's in the world. It's not of the fathers of the world. Let me mark this. And the fairies mourn over their lost supremacy. That was the destruction of the ancient world. That has been interpreted to be Atlantis, the falling angels. And I'd have to go through the fallen angels which are not here, and I'd have to go through the sons of God marrying the daughters of man to fully explain this. Sons of God were the descendants of Shem intermarrying with the descendants of Cain. To be a called of son of someone, you had to be doing the will of that father. Beloved, now are we the sons of God? There in 1 John 3 and 1. What else can I say? I'm just getting started back on this. I'm going to try to really be as thorough as I can on this thing. If I read some of these things again, please forgive me because I don't think you got it in one round. And I can't remember everything I've said. I remember having studied and taught it before. There's no such thing as demons. It's you. It's me. When we're not bound to the will of God, the demon is self. Jesus said it was self in Mark the first chapter, didn't he? Found a man with an unclean spirit. Same account over here in Luke 4. He had an unclean demonion. If he had an unclean spirit over here, whatever Jesus rebukes is what it is. And he said, what have we? He used plural. What have we to do with thee? And Jesus rebuked him. A-U-T-O. It's our word auto. It means self. An automobile is self-mobile. An autobiography is written by the man himself. Jesus rebuked self, masculine and gender, singular. He rebuked the man. The demon is self. Jesus said so. And you can hold that true everywhere you find fairies or demons. It goes back to Genesis 11. Now, once they say, let us make up our own doctrine, it'll be parallel. They'll all have a Savior. They'll have a, a born again. They'll have a prayer where they pray to the Father their God's sake. And they would say, our dear Heavenly Father. Sounds like a badness down the street to me. I, I put a lot of time in this. You know why I put time into it? I traveled as a gospel singer in the late 60s, early 70s. And as a gospel singer, you have to go into Pentecostal churches because they, they support 90% of all gospel music. And you got demons in all their churches. And it's the stupidest looking stuff I've ever seen. I've been in churches where some guy is in a Pentecostal church down in Houston. The guy's laying on the floor just jerking like that. And he just kept jerking. And me and my group, we went somewhere. We ate. We, we ate. We was gone about three hours, three and a half hours. We came back to the church. The guy's laying on the floor doing that. And I'm going to go over and say, if you don't get up there, I'm going to stomp you right in the face. <laughs> and I guarantee if it was the Holy Spirit, he wouldn't get up. Would he? Maybe he's exercising. Maybe he's exercising. Maybe he's being exercised by his demon. 
I've seen some of the craziest things. Pentecostalism is a godless doctrine. Well, let's pray. Lord, thank you for truth. God, I don't know how to explain all this. is too much. I'll try. I'll do the best I can to help challenge the people here to learn these things, and they can only get a hold of them when they study. Help them to listen. Help them to mature. God will praise you for everything. Lead us to your elect. Open doors for the ministry. I'll keep doing this. I feel extremely depressed at times, but I'll do it till I die. Just give me the strength. That's all I want, Lord. Just I want you. And strengthen the sheep. We give you praise in Christ's name. Amen. amen. I hope you can get a hold of how this stuff is just blended together. It's amazing to me. I don't want to drive you nuts. Huh? I'd love to get my hands on that. You got to get That's these. They're my great. Looks like when I, huh? This is my screen. Looks like when I'm listening to you. <laughs> five different books. I don't have a good memory, so I. Whatever. These are great. So are these McClinic and Strong. They're fantastic. No, I got McClinic and Strong. So I got the whole collection. Okay. I'm a book person. I like books. I know. Huh? But I don't have. I can sit out in a comfortable. I can sit out in a comfortable chair and just look and read. And yeah, I know. It's it's tactile. And do you know something? What? When, when you go off in this stuff, you're both musicians. You're improvising. Yeah. It's honest. Yeah. Yeah. Music is honest. Yeah. Well, it's not being, you know, whatever. It's yeah. something that everybody. But I just told Connie, I said, it's improvising. Yeah. With Lord, the Lord. Well, what I'm doing is tying everything no, together that belongs in it. But it's, it's like it's like a, yeah. it's like a beautiful seventh, ninth oh, chord, yeah. and you change, you do a chromatic scale. That's what it's like, cause it all belongs together. There's no discord in it. You don't have to apologize for that. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's talking. It's amazing what we don't know that's out there. I know. And here's a little. Th these are for people, but you might, if you want me to do it, they're very simple, and then people can. Israel and Canada. That is. Well, if you want to make any, if you want to make any copies, just put them over here on the table. Football fields. Yeah. How big are those? Yeah. Maybe use it. Small. Yeah. Near the trash cans. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love you too. It's not even fastened. That, that's not even fastened down. Hey Jim. We're gonna get this hey, here in a couple weeks. A couple of weeks, Let's okay. Platform. Okay. Right. I'm getting by. You didn't Well, yeah, probably be straight across and raise this up in here all the way to the wall. Take that stuff out of the way and put it back up against the wall. To this level right here. Huh? To this same level. This same level. And you could put some over here because I want this open where I can see. Uh, don't forget Tinkerbell. But you, 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 want, you want the platform huh? straight to this level up here. Yeah. Over. Okay. Yeah. Same level across the gym. Yeah, I'd like it just come all the way to the okay. window. All right. Or wherever else you want to go around here, if it gives me room enough to set stuff up there. If you're going to come down here and maybe come up here a little and back over there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We can do that too. Yeah. Hey, Tim, how you doing? How you doing? Oh, one day. But, you know, it's one thing when you was up there talking about uh, fairies and stuff and the moonlight and all that. The word came up to me. Tinkerbell and D Disney. Right? Yeah, all that's all. That, that all comes from there. And I, you know. Yeah, I 